Hi, so the focus of this video is really to walk you through most of the features that are making model-driven apps. So if you're relatively new to model-driven apps, you, are not, you might not be aware of all the features that you can use. So I'll walk you through the features, I'll share my screen, show you demos, explain some of those features using diagrams and visuals as well, so that by the end of this video, you have a better idea of how to build amazing apps for your organization. Model-driven apps features. So the first thing that you do is that you want to connect to data, right? So when you design model-driven apps, you start with designing your data model, your data, so you can natively connect here to Dataverse tables, and then you will pick the tables, do the relationships, and add them to your app. So how does that look like in your app? All these records here are records stored in your database, in Dataverse. And effectively, if you click, for example, on student, that is another table, it will display the list of records for that table. So as we said, your data natively will be stored in Dataverse for Power Apps. This is kind of the preferred way for you to create tables, manage your data in those tables, including relationships. But you can also leverage SharePoint list or SQL Server databases. You can use what we call virtual tables for that, which effectively will connect to those list in SharePoint or those SQL Server databases. The so next feature we look at is the user interface. So the user interface in model-driven apps get built for you natively, right? So you have UI components that are built around the tables that you are creating, right? So you can add dashboard. So if you look at what a dashboard might look like in the app, if we click on the dashboard area in the navigation, you can see here different dashboard and you can change them. So dashboard effectively show you charts, um, areas, bar, whatever chart you want, lists of records, and all these are effectively on top of the data that you have in your model-driven app. The next thing that you get is, as we said, Dataverse table. So some of these here are tables like your scholarship application, your students, your student placement. All these are Dataverse table with data in it. You can also have URL, so you can have a URL in here. You can also have custom pages. So custom pages let you tweak the UI completely to your needs. Technically, what it is, it's the same technology as used for Canvas apps, but you can render them within model-driven apps, right? So um, that might look like a very uh, specific custom UI that you want to have within your model-driven app. So let's now cover a few more details about a Dataverse table. So Dataverse tables are made of views. Uh, so views effectively, if you look at in the app, if I click on one of those tables, this is um, a list of record is in a view. So a view effectively is columns and filter. So those are my active application. But if I click on applications to review, again, all these will be the application of status to review. So we can change the views by having custom or, or specific columns in them. And then the filtering is also specific to a view. The next element to look at are forms. So forms effectively let you display the data or update the data of records. So let's take a look in our model driven app. So if I now want to navigate to a record and open the record, this is effectively the form of the record. So the form represent, you know, each of the fields of the records. You can have them in sections, also classified in tabs. Uh, you can have additional views to child tables within the form. So that is your main form. And as the form that you'll use also when you create new records, Quick create, that's another type of form. So if you look at in our model driven app, you will have a little plus, plus button here. So you can define some tables to have this quick create form. And that will show a few of the fields that you can specify in that smaller quick create form that you can use to create records. Quick views, so quick views, if you look at a form, you can have data within your form coming from a parent record. So that will be your quick view. Form components act similarly to your quick view. Uh, quick view, it's kind of a snapshot of a few fields. Uh, form component lets you put a complete form within another form. 
Let's now look at extensions. So extensions are composed of quite specific components like PCF controls, JavaScript, business rules, command bars, HTML resources. So just to list a few, so PCF controls, so those are kind of specific controls that you can add to enhance the UI of your app. There is a PCF gallery where you can browse, control, and install them and start using them. JavaScript and business rules. So use them effectively to add additional, you know, business logic and extension on your UI. So you can add JavaScript effectively to, as you are here, to hide or show specific sections or specific uh, forms. You can use JavaScript to display custom messages or based on logic. So let's say on approval status of approved, I want to show specific fields or I want to show a specific section. So you can use JavaScript for that. Comment bar power effects. So they let you add additional button in your comment bar and you can specify function underneath. HTML web resources. So HTML web resources I use mostly to display custom messages, right? So if I open a record here and you can see kind of a box with a custom message with even a custom kind of layout, you can apply your own styling. This is basically HTML that you can use within your form to add additional text or additional guidance to your users. Next feature that we're going to look at is the built-in search and reporting features. So within the built-in search and report, you have your global search, Taraver search that we call it. So if you look in our app on the top navigation, you will see a search box. So that search box is the Taraver search, searching on multiple tables. And you can configure the tables that you want to search for. Quick find. So quick find effectively let you search for records from within the table where you are currently. Advanced find. So advanced find lets you do some more filtering or more advanced filtering. Instead of using that one field, you can effectively go to your table as I'm showing you here and click on edit filter. And in the edit filter area, you can start adding additional parameters or search criteria, right? So if I search created by and I start typing a name of someone, that will that's my, my advanced find. I can look at child records, I can group or end condition and so forth. SSRS reports. So these are kind of your typical type of reports that you can create um, on using specific tables in your, in your model driven app. And then you can then format them in kind of reporting format and then export them in various formats like Word, Excel and so forth. Word and Excel template. So quite similar to SSRS reports, but in a sense, you don't have to create a report, you create a template. So let's start with Word template. So Word template effectively lets you create a Word template. Um, so you can download a template in Word, uh, add all your custom you know, logos, templating, styling, and so forth, and add dynamic fields in your template, re-upload the template, and then you can effectively download your data. So download the record that will then pre-fill those dynamic fields that you have in your Word document. Pretty handy. So let's now explore automation and logic. So there's a few features that you can use within automation and logic. So let's quickly explore each of them. So you have your classic workflows, so this is where, you know, based on an event on creation and update, you can do something in the background. Here you can see an example of how to use it. Then you have PowerFX functions, which is relatively new, right? So it's kind of building logic that you can call from many different places. So you have input parameters and output parameters. You have your Cloudflow in Power Automate. So again, very powerful tool where based on triggers, you can do some logic, conditioning, waiting, looping, and do some further action. The biggest advantage of Cloudflow is that you can leverage thousands of other connectors. So of course you can leverage the Dataverse connector to do some logic within your Power App, but you can mix and match that with other connectors, SharePoint, Outlook, DevOps, whatever you need to inject in your logic, you can actually do it using Cloudflow. Business process flow. So those are more visual processes that you can have within Power Apps on records. So effectively, when you open a record, you will have stages of your record. So it's almost like a 
UI user interface guidance for user to progress through the life cycle of a record. So you can have your stages and you can have steps that needs to be done within each of the stages. Low code plugins. So again, this is relatively similar to workflow where on a specific event, you can do some actions. And again, here you'll use Porafix expressions to do the action and you can effectively call them or associate them to tables. And finally, FX formula columns. So here effectively it's more columns that you can create on a table and you can define some logic for that column. So whether that's um, concatenating some strings or calculating some numbers, quite useful to quickly create some logic within one field. So let's look at the built-in chart and dashboard capabilities within Power Apps, right? So what you can have is that you can use native charts and dashboard. And as you can see here, there's a beautiful chart that you can quickly create based on the data that you have in your Power App in Dataverse. Um, the second option is that you can use, of course, Power BI, which integrates quite well with Power App. So an option here is to have an embedded visual of Power BI within your uh, record in Power Apps. Um, and the third option is you can have complete Power BI dashboards or reports available effectively as dashboards in your Power App. So the next feature that we are exploring is related to security. So you can quite tightly secure your app, right? So let's take a look at what are the options that you have, right? So you can effectively secure the whole app access. So you can share an app with someone or completely restrict it for someone, right? You can also go at the table access. So you can completely restrict or hide table, prevent access to tables to users. Now, one level down is you want to even go to restrict access to certain records of that specific tables, right? So you can use business units, security roles, and so forth for that. Um, now, within a record, you can have specific forms as well. So you can have different forms and you can restrict access to specific forms as well, just to kind of render specific UI to specific users. Uh, you can also hide specific views. And then finally, you can even hide or restrict access to specific columns. So let's take a look now at all the AI features that are coming within Power Apps. So natively, AI or Copilot is available in Power Apps, right? So you can effectively start chatting with your Copilot, right? So to get some more insight about the data in your Power App. Uh, there is another feature called the form fill assistant. So effectively it will pre-fill the form when you want to create records for you. Another one is the row summary. So effectively it lets you summarize the essential information of a record when you open the record. There is also various way to visualize your data dynamically using AI. So that's a new feature that has been recently added where you can plot the charts based on your data. And finally, you can also use natural language grids to search and filter on records. If you look at Copilot Studio, right? So using Copilot Studio, you can effectively customize the Copilot chat, right? So you can add additional knowledge. You can add knowledge effectively outside of the knowledge or the data that you have within your Power App. You can use all the native features that are coming with Copilot Studio, like adding additional topics, you know, adding additional actions, using prompts and so forth to really extend that Copilot experience. And finally, AI Builder. So you can effectively use AI Builder and AI models, you know, text models, document models, and more recently the AI prompts, right? So you can create a prompt with specific, you know, questions include input data, input document, and then call this via a Power Automate, and your Power Automate will effectively call the prompt, get the data back, and inject the output of your prompt within your Power App, making the Power App effectively way more intelligent, and it's almost like you can infuse AI elements or AI insight within your Power App. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, give me a thumbs up and don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more videos like this one about overviews of technologies in Microsoft and so forth. So see you in the next one. Bye.